Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, maybe you saw my previous videos where I bought $4,000 of used and new synth equipment to have interesting topics and gear to feature here on this channel. We are on a roll. I seem to have lost my mind. I'm buying up nearly all of the used gear here in Sweden and I've got six or seven new instruments to share with you today. Under the deck savers here, we've had one that I've teased for you before. This is, I'll give you close-ups of all this stuff in a minute, or maybe some B-roll. This is the, what is this? <laughs> the Micro Freak from Arturia. What a cool, funky design. I absolutely love the looks of this thing. And it's quite a joy to use. Everything feels uh, top notch here and the sounds are amazing. So stay tuned for a review and demo of the Micro Freak. What a cool thing. So when you buy things used here in Sweden, I've seen a lot of people are selling on the deck savers together with them, which is a huge bonus. Although this instrument I bought brand new. Now you may have seen <laughs> my previous mini log bass videos they sent me the wrong keyboard by mistake they sent me the mini log bass which was a lovely color of black with some swirls but unfortunately red keys that i just couldn't learn to live with uh, surprisingly most of you voted in my community poll that you like the appearance of that thing so it's something wrong with me i guess but anyway i sent it back for this they sent me the right one which is actually a bit cheaper than the wrong the one they sent me by mistake. This then is the Korg Minilog, a four voice true analog digitally controlled synthesizer. And I can't wait to try this out and demonstrate it and review it for you here on the channel. Another reason why I decided to swap them out was that I've already done a couple of videos now on the Minilog, Microlog, what's it called? Microlog. I think I just invented a synthesizer. Apparently it's pronounced log as well. This is the mini log. What was I saying? Yes, I got kind of two synths for the price of one. I've already done the mini log bass videos. Now I can do mini log regular OG videos for you. It takes a lot of work and obviously money for me to run this channel. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of stuff. Thank you very much. It's just a click. It costs you nothing, but it means a lot to me. And thank you if you already have. Okay, let's get on to the next items. I think there's four or five more out in the hallway. By the way, I, I didn't mention anything about it, but these Korg mini logs are really nicely put together. It is mini keys but they feel great and uh, the overall build and construction of these is really impressive. And yes, they sound awesome, but you already knew that. Okay, some of you said that I should just skip the mini log and get the XD instead. It's got more effects. It's got an extra oscillator. It's a stereo synth, unlike this one. I listen to you guys. Look, it's the Minilog XD. Uh, we're gonna run out of space here. Let's put this one here. So yeah, you can see a comparison of these two then together. Look at that. One in silver, one in black, otherwise very similar to each other. And yes, we'll be able to do some comparisons of these two with each other now. Now, one theme in the comments was that I'm buying too much gear and at the same time, so I can't possibly enjoy it all. And you are 100% correct. But remember, I'm buying a lot of this stuff used, so you have to strike while the iron is hot or buy stuff when it's available, to put it in a better way. So if I see a good deal here on the Swedish marketplace, which is called Block It, then I'm just snapping them up. But if, and if they sit on the shelf in the storage room, which I may show you in a separate video, if they sit there for six months, a year, a couple of months, whatever it takes, it doesn't really matter. I'm just stocking up or getting a stash, a haul of really interesting synths to feature in the future, whenever that might be. Another thing you said was that there is too much overlap and this is a ridiculous doorless jamming setup. Well, 
I'm not buying synths to make a doorless jamming setup. I'm buying synths to make interesting videos to keep myself interested in this hobby and to share with you, of course, and help grow the channel. So overlap is ideal because then I can do comparisons. I can compare these two and give you recommendations, which one I like the most and perhaps which one I think you should buy with your own hard earned money. And yes, I'm buying far more synthesizers than I actually need. The end goal is some kind of compact doorless jamming setup. That's true, but I'm buying like 20 synthesizers and then I will whittle it down to four or five that I'll keep permanently, more or less, here in the shack. Nothing is permanent, you and I both know that. So I think it'll be really interesting to see going ahead which of all of these 10 or 20 synths I've just bought make the cut stick around as keepers and which ones I quickly sell on after making a video or two. Anyway, with that backstory out the way, let's go get some more gear. Okay, you may remember me talking about getting the most unusual Roland Boutique. It's been on my radar for a while. Roland have made one boutique synthesizer that is not a clone of their own synthesizers, but a clone of somebody else's synthesizers in collaboration with a different company that has nothing to do with the original manufacturer that they're copying the synthesizer off. This is a long way, long winded introduction. And also it's the only Roland boutique, the only Roland synthesizer perhaps, unless they have some weird module thing, the only one that's pure analog. Do you know what I mean? This is the strangest thing. Let's move the XD. Sorry, you've got to go. I am talking about the Roland Mini Moog. This thing is just nuts. Look at this. This is in the Roland dock. I bought this one used. It is a Mini Moog. It's actually in partnership with SE Electronics who used to make Mini Moogs in Iraq back in the 80s and the 90s. Now they've teamed up with Roland and there's a Mini Moog, 100% analog, in a Roland boutique. I mean, how weird is that? And I can't wait to feature it on the channel. Let's prop it up on the little funky stand thing, if I can figure that out. There we go. So I can't afford a real mini Moog, although I have one coming in perhaps on loan, which we can compare to this, that'll be fun. But yeah, here we go, a boutique mini Moog. Who'd have thought it? But many of you said to me, don't bother with this thing. There's a much better mini Moog on the market. You know where this is going. So I bought that as well. And here we have it, the Model D from Behringer. How does this compare to that? Let's uh, open it up and take a look. Now, I must admit, when I opened this one, I was slightly underwhelmed. It was a bit disappointing with the feel of the knobs. Everything is crammed in together. The knobs don't feel super high quality. It just basically, I've tested it out for a couple of hours. It wasn't all that enjoyable to use, but this thing, on the other hand, costs half the price, even if you buy it new. And it's got a much nicer control panel. This thing blew me away. I was so impressed. Not only, there we go, look at that. Not only with the build quality, the knobs feel fantastic, it's all metal, and this is a pretty much 100% accurate clone of a Mini Moog with a few extra additions. So it's more of a clone of the Mini Moog Voyager, I think. This is absolutely gorgeous. I was reluctant to buy Behringer because I thought the quality wouldn't be very good. We'll have to see how long this lasts, but the construction and the feel of this is absolutely gorgeous. 10 times better than this one, by the way. This one does have many advantages and I think we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here, but this one has a step sequencer. It's got presets, but this one is very faithful to the design of the original. No presets whatsoever, no sequencer, no frills at all. 
You've got to program this one yourself from the control panel, and I love it. Wow, and this thing sounds amazing. Oh my God. Okay, let's put that down here. I've got a few more pieces for you. Yeah, you can hear, I hope, that I'm pretty excited about this stuff as well. We have another boutique. Look at this. Let me show you what we have. I can get this one out of the box as well. All of this stuff I have bought recently was used, yeah. So I got pretty good deals on it. Some of this won't be keepers, I guess. I don't need this much gear, but uh, hopefully I can sell it for more or less what I paid for it. So it's like a free rental, I suppose. Look at this, this is gorgeous. This then is the Roland Boutique SH. O1A I'm reading, and this is the digital emulation of the SH101, one of the most legendary classic. Simple mono synths of all time from Roland, and also a favourite of mine as well. I've had the pleasure of playing the original many times, and this is a very, very faithful digital recreation, and this is gorgeous. I love the quality of this, the faders actually for a boutique feel really nice and smooth and it's not too crammed. One control per function. This one also has presets if you want and it has a sequencer built in as well, like a step sequencer. And to my ears when I was demoing this the other day, I heard even some patches that were polyphonic. So that's pretty cool, there we go. A new boutique. I've now got about four or five, so it'll be interesting to compare them and see which is my favourite. Okay, I think there's one more to go. Okay, I did a video on the hunt, sharing which synthesizers I'm keen on getting. This was one of them. About a week later, I picked it up. It's in this grey cardboard box, so you already know what it is. Well, you know which brand it is anyway. And here it is. This is another log synthesizer. Um, and this is, just checking, I've got so much stuff I can't keep up. This is the Korg Monolog. What a gorgeous thing this is as well. This also has a sequencer. Many of the synths I've bought have step sequencers, which are really interesting. This is monophonic synthesizer, purely analog as well digitally controlled, whereas the mini log here is for voice poly. But I just love the form factor of this. Again, feels superbly put together. And it's gonna be really interesting for me to compare this with another monolog, analog synth that I just picked up, which I'm struggling to remember the name of. Yes, the Novation base station, which we have behind the camera in the storage room. I'll be able to compare that for you with this one. I don't need two analog monosynths, so one of them will be staying, one of them will be going. So there's actually so much gear, some would call it junk, that I can't even fit it all on the table here, so we'll have to hold it up as we sign out here. Once again, appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel in return for all of this money and time I'll be spending on making these videos, thanks in advance. I'll see you again next time. How am I going to do my traditional wave? I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Maybe this will be the thumbnail. <laughs>